Good evening. I Rapstein with your Spider ETF wrap up and this wrap up is for the evening of Monday and we are sitting here now at the 19th of September 2022. 2 minutes and 47 seconds. You know what that is? That is during this week the average amount of time per day that we lose sunlight. In other words, each day we get 2 minutes and 47 seconds less sunlight. Changes everything. Changes how you work going to have 17 minutes by the end of this week, less sunlight every day. It doesn't sound like a lot. It adds up. We're on that race to where you suddenly get to six at night in Chicago, 535, and it's getting dark. So the fun of summer is ending. Season changes are here. We've just gone through a big state funeral. I hope you watched part of the state funeral in the UK. Just what a beautiful event it was. Um, you know, the last one was Winston Churchill. So this is something that most people haven't seen anything like it. And uh, it was just phenomenal. And then we get another phenomena taking place. And that phenomena taking place now is going to be the FOMC meeting on this Wednesday. So at one o'clock, we're going to get the announcement. Guesses? I'd say that the big bet is 75% hike. The outlier bet is 100 points. The second part that we have to then look at is what is the dot plot going to look like? That's going to be crucial. What are these people saying? Now, it's anonymous. We don't know who's thinking what. But we get to see what the Fed is looking out. And people will look at it from this point right through 2023. Where does the Fed break? Where do interest rates start coming down instead of going up? Is it even in 2023? That's what people will focus on. The other event that takes place is just the law of nature. This report comes out at 1 o'clock. At 1.30, the press conference. What time is that in Asia? And what time is it in Europe? Europeans are away from their trade desks. They're out having dinner. They're sleeping in uh, Asia. They wake up. They react to whatever America did. Sometimes they reject it. Sometimes they accept it. And then it goes the other way into Europe. And then they get to think about it. And when we wake up, it's already been what I call the yin, the yang, and it's back in our lap. Did the market agree or disagree? That's why you get those wild swings sometimes. You go to bed, you wake up, you go, what the heck happened with that? That often is the case because it's perception. We know what the Fed is going to say. They're not coming out dovish. They're going to come out negative. Now, the big talk that I noticed on financial TV today, when people were talking, because most stations had on uh, the, the Queen's funeral, was they were asking, when are the PEs in stocks going to start falling? And that's the interesting question. The, the, the game is being held up on one part or held back, not falling because so many people are at work and so many people are still needed to work. Therefore, you've got money in people's pockets and that generally means you can pass on pricing in some manner and you don't have to get that PE crashing on you. If people lost their jobs and you had this inflation, the PEs would crash down. That is one of the events that's taking place and people are trying to figure that one out. Now, I'm still gonna stick with Home Default depot for a little bit. I'd like to see what the interest rate party does to it on Wednesday. Then we'll take another look and see. Maybe we'll finish this week with it and go next week with something else. But in any case, you can see how the markets come down. It's got a pattern here of a lower low and a higher high. This is that vertical price break off the CPI. That CPI did this stock in. And people took one look at that inflation. They're just wondering, will there even be the home building and so on? And if you're looking, today we had the home builder index and it, it fell another point lower than the trade was looking for. Not pretty. Tomorrow we get um, housing starts and building permits. It should be an ugly report. On rallies, there's an awful lot of resistance up to the 18, the 100, the 200 day average. This is a bearish chart in terms of resistance. The market bounced off the Bollinger Band. That's what I teach you. You get these Bollinger Bands down here, markets only stay outside of the black lines 5% of the time. So when the market's under it, no, I, I'll let you sell it. I don't want to sell it there. And I don't want to be a buyer up there. I want to trade in the gravy of it. Trends will work with it. Working with that as your bouncing points, not necessarily breaking the trends. 
The momentum never did embed. Therefore, I have an oversold market going into this report. It's come down very hard, just from 302.83 to 268. That's a heck of a break. And the market's giving you a little bit of a bounce. Netflix. So now we're getting ready for them to come out with their new ad-based version. Will it be a big success? Will they be able to put people into it? And here's why. People are cutting back on streaming. As inflation bites, and food and other costs go up, you got to look at your bills and go, what do you do? I went out this weekend for my new phone. And on my, I, I've got an iPhone 10. I want the 14 Pro. And so I went and I looked at it. And my carrier, I looked to see, do they have any old payments on one of our other phones? We have more than one phone in the house. And I wanted to move both. Why? If I make my move to another carrier and take my house internet and everything in it, I save a third of my bill, total bill. So that's with taxes, everything included, including if I want to not pay for the phone up front and let it work out that way. The deals are phenomenal. Uh, my carrier is offering $800 off the phone. You heard me. 800. Another one that I went to, I looked at and I said, well, at 150 a month, I'm way ahead of the game. Why do I need the, the 800? Now you're looking at 150 times 12 months. It's a no-brainer for me. So tomorrow, I'll take a break in the morning from my work. I'll go over, bring my two phones, blah, blah. They'll move the lines. They'll get it in October and I'm done. And I got a savings on top of it. That's what people are going to do. I'm one of those guys. I look to see, should I bundle things different? What am I going to get for all this? When I take a look also at Apple, Apple went down to its lower band. What are you pressing? It lost its embedded reading. What are you pushing? This market's probably going to give you a bounce. Did it embed? That's always an interesting question. So you got to come back on the chart. Both numbers were under 20. Both numbers were under 20. And both numbers were not under 20. Under 20, under 20 Friday, and today, not under 20. Oversold market, hit the Bollinger Band, uh, missed it, I take it back. Got to 140, well, let me come back here. One more day. The low here is 148.37 to 147.93. So you missed it by 40 cents, it's enough. On $140 stock, $150 stock, 40 cents is nothing. You're in a zone. And with it turning back up, I don't care if you got out there or not. I think the pros are taking money off the table going into the Wednesday meeting. Disney, did you see the uh, interviews today? They were fascinating. People were, a survey was done, uh, thousands of people about Disney Smart, what's going on for your Disneyland business. 70% of the people, from what I read on the, the quick read that I did on it, it's too expensive, can't go there, the fun's out of Disneyland. Tickets run per day, per person that they were doing, 102 to $150 a day, a family of five, you can't do it. Family of four, you can't do it. You got to fly there, you got to get a room, you got to pay these ticket prices. Disney's got to come up with something more affordable. That is what the survey said. This is a smart company. They've got to figure it out. Uh, the fun is there, but you can't enjoy the fun if you're breaking the family. When I had friends go this summer and they told me what they spent, I almost fell over. I, a family of four, and we're talking thousands of dollars at a shot here. I said, well, was the time worth it? And the answer universally, no. Not good, not good, all right? Um, XLF, lower highs, lower lows. The resistance is right up here. Again, the market just missed the Bollinger Band. If it hits it, that's where the pros would come out. Uh, no, missed it, by the way, by nine cents. So you're in that zone again. But I like when you hit the band like you did here and here, and then you get your bounce away from it. This was also today, I think, a short covering day for the people that have come out since the CPI report. You can almost look on every one of these charts and you can go back to where the CPI number came in and you can see how the markets have come down. What do I think is going to happen? Well, the resistance now, you just had a bearish crossover. 
where the 18 day average got under the 100 today in this market. So I think that uh, soon the market will get back under 161.82. That's my guess because you're getting more bearish on the moving averages. You are oversold. Anything with a 30 number, uh, under a 30 number is oversold. You got a 28 there. It's not embedded either. In the home builders, well, you, you talk about a group walking into the eye of the storm. What do you think Wednesday is going to be? They're already at a 6.02% mortgage. What are they going to do? I mean, these people are just getting annihilated. The biggest hit has probably been the home builders. I didn't say home prices. I said home builders. Sellers are getting much more aggressive. They realize the tide, it went out. All right. So now if they want to sell, they got to get more creative. Builders have done it. I went back and I, I said to you last week, they're going to get creative. They'll figure out ways to change down payments, payment back on their mortgage. They'll figure things out. I saw it happen on the last run like this. It's all coming out again. You just bring out the playbook. You dust it off. You open it up. What worked then will work now. Energy sector, short covering area. You're caught in the sideways action. Do you press a Bollinger Band to go lower? You do not, ever. It is a come out number when you're not embedded. It's different when you're embedded, you're not embedded. Embedded means the blue and the red like they were here going and staying under the 20 level. But when you lose it, you're gonna get a rally. Normally it goes back to the 18 day average and from there the game starts fresh. Well, you never did embed here, you're just oversold in the gold but it's not lifting away. There is nothing bullish on this chart that I see. If it rallies, great, but I'm not seeing anything friendly. This is the resistance point in GDX. Now, if it does clear 24.89, it negates the bearish part. It stays pretty much in the sideways action void of a trend. But right here, I think the pros tested it today. I think they went home short. We'll see if they can live through that or not. Copper, same thing. You're back into the resistance. You got to take out 3075 to break the pattern of lower highs, lower lows. Momentum is flat. So the trend down, the bias is down, and that negates the trend. There's nothing that can turn gold or copper bullish. They can go to their upper band just off of short covering, but not in a bull run. There's a difference. TLT. BND. Why do you want to be involved in these in any manner now going into the FOMC report? We know what it's supposed to say. We don't know what they will say. Do you understand the difference? We don't know how the market will react. Does it sell the rumor, which it's been doing all the way through here by the fact, or will it be more selling? Depends how bearish the tone is from the Fed chair. I don't think the number of 75 is necessarily going to send the market sharply lower. I do think a 100 basis point hike is a real message that it's a mess. We got to get ahead of it. Things are bad. The inflation is too well entrenched. That would be scary. UUP backing off suddenly. Obviously, it doesn't act like it wants to get up to that 18 day average of closes. And FXE, can a market just start going more sideways than this one caught in the narrowness of those Bollinger Bands? You learn these patterns in my charting course. Then I reinforce what you're learning both here and my morning subscriber video, certainly the morning subscriber, because I walk you through everything there in detail so that you really grasp what you're seeing. And as I said, I believe this concept Bollinger Band and Momentum work together. Stocks, futures markets, the commodity parts of the market, spiders, ETFs, all these different vehicles. It even works on just data. Believe it or not, I've run it on just data numbers, not of market prices, other types of data. It's amazing what it comes to show. So if you're interested in learning it, you should be. This is your time to do it. Okay, learn it, apply it through the fall and winter, and maybe it just changes the way you look at those numbers as you see them. How do you do this? Well, take a look at this and take it from there. I'm I Rapstein. You have a good evening. Welcome. I'm I Rapstein, and I'm here to talk about my enhanced Bollinger Band course. Now, many of you have taken my regular charting course, and if not, you might think you know something about Bollinger Bands. As you know, Bollinger Bands are an 
algorithm designed to keep the market trading within it 95% of the time. And on a chart, it will offer on the top part resistance, on the bottom support, and the ideas the market will travel within them. We know that sometimes it latches on to that band, goes up or goes down. Well, how do you play with that? Can you pyramid the positions off that type of thinking? Well, I've applied all three of these into 13 different videos that teach you my concept of it. And from that concept, you're able to work with weekly charts and or daily charts. The 13 videos, each about seven minutes long. The idea here is not to put you in school forever, but to teach. Now, if you haven't tried my complete futures research, I throw that in as well. Whether you've tried this or not, I think it's worth taking a look at. I think you're going to learn something from there. That research, by the way, covers twice daily market updates for you and access to what I call window envelope numbers, which I think are very important when looking at these Bollinger Bands. The next part is a trial to our charting software so you can make your charts look the same way that I do. It's that simple. Where do you go with it and how do you get all this? It's simple. You go to our website, www.iraepstein.com. If you go to the word education, everything you need is answered there. You can also call my staff. They'll be happy to help you get set up. I'm Ira Epstein on the road to your education.